Chetan, Sri Lanka was successful in yesterday's semi-final against Pakistan, so they go through to the final. Uh, in 2009, in the final when these two sides met, Sri Lanka only posted three runs less than they did yesterday. When Pakistan were batting, it looked like the game might be heading on a similar course, but it turned out to be quite different. So Pakistan not quite good enough on the day, were they? Well, let's start with uh, let's start with how the match began. I thought it was a very very close game. It was a game that uh, meandered a lot, that he saw between the two sides a lot. Uh, um, Sri Lanka started very well on a pitch that was not very good, but then uh, Pakistan pulled it back. And it's always amazing to see Pakistan fight back in earnest. I mean, they are a side that is very very prone to self destruct. But when they do get it right, they're absolutely brilliant to watch. And the way they pull back things in the Sri Lankan innings, in the second half of Sri Lankan innings. It was remarkable to watch. Also, if you notice, the way the pitch was behaving, especially with Pilakath and Dushan was not able to play his shots. And it was, it, was a, it was a marker that the pitch was not very good for shot making. And um, perhaps it would have been a little difficult for Pakistan to even chase 140. Even so, 140 was a pass score. Uh, Jairudne and Salakara batted beautifully. But the, the way Dushan had, uh, had difficulties in playing his shots, so it was quite apparent that uh, 140 was going to be a difficult target. But once again, Pakistan were in control towards the middle of the innings, at the half stage, the match was still in balance, Mawar Rafi was batting beautifully, and I think it was his dismissal that was the turning point, and from there on, it was, uh, it was just self-destruct mode for Pakistan. And uh, Sri Lanka introduced Rangana Herath into the side, that proved to be rather an inspired pick, because he took three wickets and really you know, killed the innings off in the middle there, after, as you say, Hafiz had fallen. Yes, I think um, Rangana Herath was uh, quite an inspired change, that's, that's the cliche word that's being uh, thrown around a lot now. Um, and Anjai, we don't know if he was fit enough or they thought that Rangana Herath would be a better option to bowl in this pitch in this track, uh, which was going to take some turn. It was, the dust bucks were coming uh, as, as soon, as, uh, as, soon as, as early as the third over, it says. So, in that particular sense, yes, Rangana Herath bowled beautifully and of course I think he was, he's the one who broke the back of the Pakistan uh, batting order. Uh, Mohamed Hafiz, the shot that he played was not really necessary at that particular point of time. But he was also unlucky that uh, the ball kept a touch low and uh, he missed it completely to be out stumped. But the way Shahid Afridi got in, first ball, ball, I mean, you really need to see where the ball is going, don't you? So in that particular sense, Shahid Afridi was a bit of disappointment, but you got absolutely right that Rangana Harat was, uh, was the one man who read most havoc on, uh, on the Pakistan batting lineup. And it was his bowling that, uh, uh, that, that really dashed all their hopes. Uh, Pakistan were quite a few people's pre-tournament picks. I've been backing them all the way, but they've been perhaps... Uh, what, what, how would you sort of assess their tournament? Would you say it's disappointing in getting to the semi-finals for the fourth time in a row is still nevertheless pretty impressive? Uh, yes, I think they were my pre-tournament pre favourites as well. I had backed them to go all the way through. Uh, probably, probably I wanted them to play Australia in the final, so... Uh, all said and done, I think it was a good tournament for Pakistan. Uh, the fact that they have been playing away from home for a long, long time, and despite that, they have uh, they have performed to a reasonably well expectation. Um, they have reached the semi-finals of every T20 World Cup, and they have kept that record um, record safe. That record still stands. So, in that particular sense, Pakistan have done well. Probably the, what they missed was a little bit of experience in their batting lineup. It was always a light batting lineup. Um, given their tendency to self destruct, uh, this was always on the cards. Uh, uh, as, you, as I said, you know, probably a little more experience uh, going forward. Uh, the bowling looks very, very good. And uh, along with the coaching of Dar Watmore, I think they have done brilliantly well. So maybe, uh, maybe, maybe if they can have a little bit of experience going forward, and uh, uh, this, should be, this should be a good base to build upon. And finally, Chetan, I understand that uh, the England-New Zealand women's semi-final yesterday was your first experience, uh, first-hand experience, I should say, of women's cricket. I imagine you'll be hoping for some slightly more even contests for the remaining two games. Uh, well, yes, it was the first experience for me for a women's international match. I must admit I was not too thrilled with the way things uh, went in that particular game, but I am told the West Indies-Australia match uh, is going to be a to be a lot better because they have a few hitters and uh, probably the teams are better matched. So yes, and again in the evening then we have the West Indies Australia semi-final. So that is going to be a cracker of a game because uh, the first match uh, between these two sides in this uh, men's tournament was washed out and um, West Indies were unlucky to lose that game. We don't know if they would have lost had, uh, had the game gone on. But uh, otherwise, uh, we're having a very, very close match in that. So, two good contests. Both of them were Australia to, uh, 
uh, in the second semi-final for both the men's and women's. And yes, looking forward to both.